Hi, everybody. Let's pick up where we left off. Today, part two, the other ones. That is section 6.6, .6, trapezoids and kites. The other two kinds of special quadrilaterals. First, we'll talk about trapezoids and their subset, isosceles trapezoids, and then talk about kites. So, first, what is a trapezoid? You've probably seen a trapezoid drawn that way before, as if it's a triangle with the top cut off. You may even have seen a trapezoid shaped kind of like this. But trapezoids can even be oriented this way. How can all those things be the same shape? Well, a parallelogram was defined as a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid has only one pair. In fact, a trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of parallel sides, then it's a parallelogram. If it has one, it's a trapezoid. If it has none, then it's neither of those things. We just call it a quadrilateral. So, what are we going to do with trapezoids? These odd shapes that have two parallel sides. Well, we're going to do some algebra, but first we should identify things like their base and their legs. So, a trapezoid actually has two bases, and those are simply the parallel sides. trapezoid also has two legs, and those are the not parallel sides. It also has some base angles. I think I'll make those green. Now I say angles formed by a base and both legs. This picture here has the correct information, but it might not be obvious what it means. What it's saying is, is that there's two different pairs of base angles. Those base angles can have special properties, but they usually have them as a pair. One other thing we might notice is that just like the parallelogram, trapezoids have all of the same properties that they would normally have for having parallel lines. Specifically, in this example, angle A and angle B are supplementary because they are consecutive interior angles. So watch out for parallel line properties. Now, that doesn't seem like there's too much opportunity for algebra right there. But fortunately, trapezoids can be isosceles, just like triangles. And just like isosceles triangles, there's a theorem which says that the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are equal. Unlike an isosceles triangle, there's two pairs of base angles. So there's two pairs of equal angles in any isosceles trapezoid. 
Now suppose that angle R in this diagram is equal to 106. What are the other two, or the other three angles rather, what are their measures? All right. Well, I hope that my color coding was a helpful clue. Since there is an isosceles trapezoid, that means that angle R is congruent to angle 6. Angle S. Why is angle 6? Weird. Meaning they're both 106. Then, we can find angle Q because it must be supplementary to angle R. because of consecutive interior angles. So that means angle Q is 74. And then because, again, it's an isosceles triangle, angle Q must be congruent to angle P. Here I'd ask for questions, but instead we'll just have to move on. Isosceles trapezoids also have an sp additional special property where their diagonals are equal. Just like rectangles. So you might end up with a situation where you're given expressions for the diagonals and then have to determine whether they're equal or not or the, use the fact that they're equal to find x, perhaps. Also this. We didn't get to talk about the mid-segments of a triangle earlier, but apparently we're going to be talking about the mid-segment of a trapezoid. Basically, if you have the two midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid, and you connect them with a segment. I said connect them with a segment. There we go. Then the length of that segment is the average of the lengths of the two bases and is perpendicular to both bases. An excellent example that we might have is this. Let's try and find the length, or the measure of x, and the length of mn. So, mn, in this case, would be equal to one half the sum of the lengths of QR and PS. And so we work this out. Let's see, that's negative 2, 4x minus 1. That looks good. So x equals 6. Therefore, mn is equal to 23. We could check this if we needed to, because the sum of qr and ps should equal 46. Yep, 36 plus 10 would equal 46. So we did it correctly. Yay! And that's the sort of problems we'll be having with trapezoids. However, we've still got kites to worry about. What's a kite? Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. This is a kite.
it is trapezoid can have congruent opposite sides, and the various kinds of parallelograms can do all sorts of things. But a kite has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides instead of opposite sides. And in fact, its opposite sides are not congruent, since that would make it into a parallelogram. Now, many a time, we'll simply be presented with the sort of problem where we are told it's a kite. And then asked to solve for x by being given the lengths of consecutive sides. But kites have several properties of their own. For one thing, as you may have guessed, these angles are congruent. However, these angles are not. Additionally, as this box that I'm writing over indicates, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Just like a rhombus. Now, Additionally, like a rhombus, the diagonal of a kite that isn't between the equal angles bisects those never congruent angles. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but most of it simply springs from there being 90 degree angles, as its diagonals are all perpendicular. So, what might be in this picture the measures of angles 1, 2, and 3? Well, the measure of angle 1 is, of course, 90 degrees because it's an angle formed by the diagonals, and they're perpendicular. The measure of angle 3 we can find next, because it's going to be exactly the same as this 36 degrees. And the measure of angle 2, well, since angle 3 is 36, and we already have a 90 degrees there, Angle 2 is simply whatever's left. Oops. I put congruent signs when I shouldn't have. Let's see here. What would that be? 54? Yes. 54 degrees. And there you have it. So, after completing this Ed puzzle, I'll know that you attended class. And... Uh, you'll find the homework on Schoology. And I will have another lesson for you later this week. And I'll see you on next week.